Mr. Prime Minister, sir, my name is Javed Akhtar, and I am a writer and a poet. Almost on a daily basis, Pakistan's official media and powers that be show their deep concern about the human rights of those Kashmiris who hold Indian passports and are Indians. But I really wonder that this kind of concern is totally absent in the case of those Biharis who are living in Bangladesh and they hold Pakistani passports and they are Pakistani citizens. And for so many years, they are not even allowed to go back to their own country. They also have some human rights. And please permit me to ask one more question very quickly. That ultimately, every time I hear that the core issue is Kashmir, I believe the core issue is Indian Muslims, 15 crore Muslims. If Pakistan makes any kind of claim on Kashmir, it is proposing two-nation theory once again. And if we accept that, we accept that Pakistan is a Muslim country and India is a Hindu country, then what, who, what do you suggest to 15 crore Indian Muslim? Whether they should live like second grade citizens in India or would you want them to migrate to Pakistan? Thank you, uh, Mr. Javed Akhtar, for your question. Let me say first, before I get into the question, that your poetry is enjoyed by many of us. And when it's blended with music, it is very soothing. You mentioned, sir, about uh, the issue of uh, people resident in Bangladesh who came from Bihar. Let me say that uh, several million of them are already in Pakistan. Many have settled in Bangladesh because that is where their origin is. There are a few who would want to come and the United Nations and many other groups have helped move them along over the years to Pakistan. And the rest uh, who are there, we are engaged in discussions to see how we can find a palatable solution to their needs. As regards the Muslims in India, you are well aware that uh, they are resident in India. And I assume and hope that they are getting all their rights as citizens of India. We in Pakistan naturally uh, watch how they are doing. and they are always watching what Pakistan is doing. But both countries are able to take care of their citizens. And unlike Kashmir, which is a disputed territory, those living in India are being attended to by your government. And I'm sure they will give them all the facilities and rights which they deserve. So are you suggesting that the citizens of our, our part of Kashmir do not get the same rights as the other Muslims in India? Well, as I mentioned, I think there are con concerns that uh, they, may, they have issues, they have challenges, which create the situation which that area is in today. Let me move on to the other subject which you raised was economic cooperation. Uh, I have here Mr. Rahul Bajaj would like to ask a question, I believe. Uh, is he here? Mr. Prime Minister, my name is Rahul Bajaj. And I've had the privilege of being your friend for over 15 years. I'm delighted to hear that the Kashmir problem, the, this intractable problem is making progress. But we also note that much more needs to be done. But Mr. Prime Minister, you have been a businessman, a banker, and I am a businessman. We are sometimes impatient. So mine is not a question as much as a cry of anguish. When will businessmen in both countries, your businessmen are as keen as the businessmen in India, be able to trade more and more and more? Because I think my grandchildren may have to 
do business if you keep waiting for this Kashmir problem. It's a problem. We understand your difficulties. But with you as the Prime Minister of Pakistan, we do hope that business will take place, not tomorrow, but starting from today. Both countries will stand to benefit. And hopefully, this will also lead to a solution of the Kashmir problem. I may only add one more thing. You did mention in passing that there is a big trade surplus in favor of India. We have to find out how and why Pakistani goods don't come into India. Now, I can't speak for the government of India, Mr. Prime Minister, but I do speak for the Indian business community, industry associations like CII, that we are prepared to remove or recommend to our government the removal of all tariff barriers, especially all non-tariff barriers, to allow your products to come into our country. As far as reciprocal arrangements are made for our products in your country, maybe by a delay of a year or two, we'll let you come in first. But let's have trade, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Bajaj. Uh, let me say that uh, we share the enthusiasm in the room about expanding our economic ties. Nobody disputes the merit of having more trade and expanding our economic relations. In this context, the gas pipeline, which I mentioned, will be a major effort to link the two countries and benefit the two economies. As regards trade, we have just uh, had an experts committee meeting in Delhi, which has identified or attempted to identify why the trade level is where, not, is where it ought not to be, and the barriers which exist. The concern our businessmen have is non-tariff barriers. I think these are solvable, and with support of the Indian private sector and the government, we can attempt to create a level playing field. <clears throat> Let me also take this opportunity to talk about SAFTA. As members of SARC, we have agreed on a SAFTA timetable. And I think that will also provide an opportunity to increase trade. In the interim, as we dismantle non-tariff barriers or perceptions of non-tariff barriers, there is no reason why we cannot identify win-win situations where trade can be enhanced even in the current environment. Trade does take place today, but more can be done. So as soon as uh, our experts are back now from Delhi and they are going to brief us on the meeting, I think we will make one more step forward in enhancing trade between the two countries. And if India can give the comfort to our private sector to have a bit of an edge, I think that is the type of spirit we need to develop to promote trade, which, let me uh, say, philosophically we all believe in in Pakistan. Pakistan is a free economy. And uh, local foreign investment and uh, trade are totally unrestricted. So what we are trying to do is find a way to open up uh, our trade at a level higher than it is today where it benefits both countries. But naturally, uh, we need to keep showing progress on the Kashmir issue so both move in tandem. I am optimistic. Sir, so, Prime Minister, Thank will you. Rahul's grandchildren have to wait or his sons or can it happen now? It was a time frame he asked for, too. I think, uh, I think uh, SAFTA already has a timetable. But uh, depending on how our expert level talks have gone, I just arrived from a foreign trip uh, last night. So I haven't had time to look at the details. But I think we have the basis of uh, creating uh, 
environment which will promote more trade between the two countries. But we must satisfy our private sector here that when they export to India, there are no non-tariff barriers. So what's your view on um, granting India MFN status? Well, uh, uh, MFN, our position is very clear that uh, at the moment we will do selective increase in the trade menu, which is happening. We've just uh, added some more items a couple of months ago, and this will keep expanding till the overall uh, collage of our relationship uh, reaches a level where we can be normal as trading partners. But I hope, uh, I hold a lot of hope with SAFTA. That may be the right way to get where we want to go. We move on to the diplomatic side. Uh, Mr. M.K. Raskotra, former Foreign Secretary, would like to ask a question. Mr. Prime Minister, may I respectfully compliment you on a very eloquent address. There were areas in it uh, with which one could uh, uh, disagree or make an issue of, but I, that's not my purpose. A short while ago, President uh, of Afghanistan addressed this gathering, and in the course of his address, he pleaded fervently for cooperation of Pakistan, for cooperation of India, and other countries of this region. He repeated this phrase, this region, that is South region, South Asian region, uh, which his country <coughs> desperately needs. In answer to a question, he said, that he would welcome an invitation to join SARC, and his country would be delighted to, make, uh, to, to become a member of SARC. Would you, sir, join the Prime Minister of India, or your president will join the Prime Minister of India at the next summit to extend an invitation to Afghanistan to become a member of SARC? Thank you. Well, uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan uh, have very close relationships and links. And uh, any membership of SARC, as you know, has to be unanimous uh, from all the membership, but we would certainly support Afghanistan being a member of this August body. <clears throat> Mr. M.K. Jha wants to ask a question. Your so Excellency. May सर मैं ये सवाल आपसे हिंदुस्तानी उर्दू में पूछ रहा हूँ पिछले दिनों आपकी सरकार ने एक आपके यहाँ की एक्ट्रेस है मेरा जिन्होंने हिंदुस्तानी फिल्म में काम किया उन पर जुर्माना किया गया और अब ये कुछ खबर आ रही है कि आपकी सरकार एक बार फिर तेरे से सोच रही है कि पाकिस्तानी आर्टिस्ट जो बॉलीवुड में आके काम करते हैं उन पर पाबंदी लगाई जाए योर रिस्पॉन्स जी हाँ मैंने रात रात को ये सुना था Oh, sorry, do you want me to reply in Urdu or English? Urdu is fine, sir. Uh, Urdu is fine, okay. So, is, uh, ji, is pe yahan hamari public mein reaction hua hai ki shahid uh, koi aisa scene wagaira ho jo culturally acceptable na ho yahan. Ab uh, mein iski details mein dekh raha hon and then we'll decide, but uh, अगर हमारे आर्टिस्ट वहाँ जाते हैं अंडर सम अरेंजमेंट तो ऐसी कोई बात नहीं है हमारे काफ़ी म्यूजिशंस वगैरह और पॉप ग्रुप्स गज़ल सिंगर्स कवाल्स हिंदुस्तान जाते रहे हैं और आपके भी आर्टिस्ट यहाँ आए हैं और इसी से मेरी नज़र में पीपल टू पीपल कांटेक्ट बढ़ता है एक दूसरे की कल्चरल सेंसिटिविटीज़ का ख्याल थोड़ा बहुत रखना चाहिए दिस इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट but otherwise, I think having exchange of artists is perfectly healthy and promotes a healthy environment. Thank you. I'd just like to remind you, sir, that last conclave, uh, the President Musharraf, in fact, requested Ashwarya Rai not to act in films which portrayed the Pakistani army in a poor light. So it's, uh, it's coincidental that it, now it's happening the other way, too. Um, Mr. N. N. Jha, former diplomat, would like to ask a question. Your Excellency, 
You would recall uh, last January, January 2004, in the joint statement issued in Islamabad at, at the end of the SOC summit, Pakistan had made a commitment about preventing cross-border terrorism in India. Now, in the light of this, uh, we have this incident in Srinagar yesterday, for which one of the organizations, Al Badr, has claimed responsibility. Now, don't you think, Mr. Prime Minister, that the concept of cross-border terrorism should be defined or should be kept in mind in a very <coughs> comprehensive manner to include planning for such action, financing such action, etc., not just the physical movement across the LOC. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, we've always said that Pakistan uh, gives moral and diplomatic and political support to people in the disputed area of Kashmir. Naturally, we do not uh, favor cross-border terrorism and have taken uh, all the necessary steps to contain this. However, if uh, something happens uh, in the Indian part of Kashmir, that is a reaction of the local people. And I'm sure that uh, this has nothing to do with uh, what uh, political and moral support we give, but is based on the local situation in Kashmir. Mr. Adi Godridge would like to ask a question. I think you know him too. Yes. Mr. Prime Minister, it's good talking to you and good hearing you again. Uh, may I ask you whether you would feel that mutual investments in the manufacturing sector by Indians in Pakistan and Pakistanis <coughs> in India would be a confidence building measure as you mentioned about the gas pipeline and could it then lead to better diplomatic and political progress between the two countries? Thank you. Yeah, uh, Mr. Godrich, the gas pipeline to, uh, in our view, is a very important confidence building measure. And I'm really hoping that we will bring this to maturity very soon. On the other hand, expanded trade, as we are discussing now through the Committee of Experts, and creating a balance in the trade uh, flows between the two countries will also help. The area of investment uh, we are examining at the moment, uh, we feel uh, the atmosphere is not uh, exactly right, but I think things are moving very rapidly. And uh, we are at the moment considering the IT sector as a pilot to get investments uh, from each other's country. Pakistan, as you know, uh, encourages uh, Pakistani entrepreneurs to invest all over the world, and we are very open for FDI. But it is correct that in the Indian situation, this is not the case. And uh, we'll have to walk before we run, but I think the, gradually we can reach that situation if the overall relationships between the two countries make progress. General VP Malik would like to ask a question. <clears throat> Mr. Prime Minister, <clears throat> I am General Malik, uh, a soldier. I've had to fight a few wars with Pakistan, but um, I hope I don't have to, or we don't have to. And um, <clears throat> I'm not a warmonger, and we uh, look forward to peace and development that is part of your vision. Uh, I have a point um, <clears throat> on mixing terrorism and freedom fighters, as you mentioned. Now, as far as terrorists are concerned, I, mean, I think the definition is quite clear. We've had people attacking <clears throat> our assemblies and parliaments. We've had people attacking personalities, including you. 
And just a couple of days ago, we had an incident in JNK in which the two terrorists who were killed both belonged to Gujranwala, Pakistan. So, sir, when these things happen, what would you call them? Are they freedom fighters? Because none of them belong to JNK. They all came from the other side. And those who attacked you, in any case, they belong to your own country. May I request you to uh, give your own comments on terrorist activities that have started some years ago and are still continuing and are affecting not only India, but also your country. Thank you. Pakistan has always said that it abhors terrorism in any form, anywhere in the world. We believe at the same time that the world has a responsibility to see what are the root causes of terrorism. Why do people behave in a certain way? Why do they give up their lives the way they do? And in our view, terrorism, one of the root causes is a sense of deprivation. And deprivation can manifest itself in many forms. Poverty is a form of deprivation. Lack of income and opportunity is a form of deprivation. Lack of basic human rights is a form of deprivation. Lack of a free press is deprivation. Lack of justice is deprivation. So these are all the factors and many others which cause people to behave in a certain way. The world has a responsibility to uh, create circumstances where the causes, the root causes, are minimized. So issues are settled peacefully. And issues are settled without resorting to armed conflict. Pakistan's approach on our defense is entirely for peaceful purposes. We have no aggressive designs against anybody. We want to live in peace, and we want to live securely, with an atmosphere of security internally and externally. And I think the process of engagement which India and Pakistan have started encourages me, encourages our government that we can talk about the issues and find solutions by showing courage and flexibility. But sir, do you, do you accept you. the fact of cross-border terrorism exists, that there is Pakistani citizens who are... Well, as I said, uh, I have no idea. I have no idea on the facts mentioned by the Honorable uh, General Malik. Uh, uh, so I can't comment on that except to say that we do not, uh, we have to separate cross-border terrorism from domestic issues and domestic situations. So I would put the onus back on you to see why people behave the way they do in uh, Indian-held uh, uh, Kashmir. And I think that uh, needs some soul searching on your part also. Sadly, sir, we've just about reached the end of the, our time, but I'll take the privilege of asking you the last question. Sir, in India, we have Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and Mrs. Sonia Gandhi, considered to be a kind of odd couple in power. We don't know too much about the dynamics of that relationship. Perhaps you could give us an insight relationship between you and President Musharraf. How does it work out? Who does what? And where is each one's role defined? Certainly. Well, uh, we have a very effective team in Pakistan. <clears throat> the president is the head of state. <clears throat> 
he has a uh, lot of wisdom and global stature <clears throat> he advises uh, and provides leadership to the country the role of the prime minister is very clear in our constitution the prime minister is the chief executive but i as prime minister feel privileged that we have a president like general musharraf who has tremendous vision capabilities and uh, as you know the president of pakistan chairs the national security council so in our nsc we have a formal structure which discusses issues like foreign policy internal and external security and that provides a forum for interaction between the prime minister the four elected chief ministers the speaker of the house the chairman of the senate the leader of the opposition and the three service chiefs so in pakistan we have institu institutionalized a consultative process on the issues i just highlighted to you we have a very close relationship personally and i and the president talk about all issues which concern pakistan and its future so in pakistan we are very clear how this collective process and the advisory role of the national security council allows us to reach decisions which are in our national interest we have a relationship which works well and is a source of strength for the country and the quality of governance which is available in the country thank you very much ladies and gentlemen thank you.